Welcome back, my ninjas, to another 7 Ninjas Studios Contrast 101. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I, how 7 Ninjas Studios, how I do power swords. I'm going to show you four different ways. We're going to start with a standard power sword. We're going to be using Leviathan Blue and Ethermatic Blue as our blend. We've got our contrast medium out, and we have a fairly fine tip brush. And we see here, we're going to coat the entire sword with contrast or we're going to coat just one half of the sword i'm sorry one half of the blade with contrast medium and then we're going to come in and we're going to put leviathan blue towards the bottom and about a third of the way up and we're going to blend that out now we're going to come in wipe our brush clean i'm in the water there can't see it put in ethermatic we don't want too much ethermatic now we come in at the about the halfway point with our ethermatic blue and we're going to move that up and down now blending 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 What's going to happen, this is going to transition naturally as well, but I want to make sure that I kind of get it where I want it to begin with. So a little more ethermatic or a little more Leviathan to make that color a little stronger there at the bottom. Because you do want a nice contrast of dark to light. So I want you to be able to see here how that looks. We'll put that Leviathan down there and then just bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Make that ethermatic a little stronger there in the center, and then bring that up, bring that up. And we stop just before we get all the way to the tip. Now, unfortunately, I did get a little Leviathan there at the top end. That's a bit more Leviathan than I wanted. So here I am pulling some Leviathan off and then moving it how I like. Do take a little bit more time with this very first application than with any of the other applications in this video and that's just because i was trying to get this side right and i think i kind of overworked it a little bit but that's okay so you can see we've got a little bit of it crossed onto the other side we're going to let that dry now we're going to take our white paint and we're going to go over that opposite half with the white paint because we want that little bit that we got off on the other side. Now, uh, I do the other half, the, the back of the sword, differently than I do the front of the sword. And I'm even going to do the other two swords differently. So here we go. Here's the white paint. Just got that half going white. No big deal. Covered up all of our mistakes there. That'll dry in just a moment. So we're going to go ahead and get our three colors ready to do the other half. There we go. We're taking our contrast medium. Taking our Leviathan. This time we're starting at the other end. And you can see the gravity wants to work it down the blade for us. So now we take our ethermatic. We put that at about the halfway point, And we wiggle that together there. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. A little bit more Leviathan or Ethermatic Blue. We're going to pull that slightly towards, more towards the bottom, and we're going to blend that a little better by pulling off some of that Leviathan. Pull off a little bit more Leviathan, and then blend that together a little more smoothly. Let's let that Leviathan be strong at the top and not so strong towards the middle. And that's that's the balancing act. You do want it to blend smoothly from color A to color B to white. Pull off a little more Leviathan. Add a little more Ethermatic where we pulled off too much. It's a balancing act. It's a game. But I think, I think we're getting pretty good there. Now, close up our pots and we're going to let this side fully dry. And set it down on a flat surface so the blade is flat. And because this is on a pole, you can see it doesn't sit flat when I do that. So I did have to set some things under it to get it to hold nicely. Now I'm going to take a little bit of white paint and a very fine brush. And I'm just going across that edge like that. And I will have to come back and redo this, uh, which I, I code totally forgot about when I did this bit. I went, oh, I'm going to have to come back and redo this. Hmm. 
Because when I do the other side, I will inevitably get paint where I don't want it. And now we're going to get a little thin line, thin line of white paint right down the center of the blade. My brush is so small, my paint is drying so quickly, I can't actually get it onto the blade. There we go. That white dividing line will help define your blade a little better, and I do need to improve that line some, so we're going to come back in. There we go. A little bit thicker. A little bit thicker. It's not as straight as it possibly could be, but it's good enough. Now we're going to come in with our blade steel, and we are going to affect the uh, power nodule that comes up the side of the blade there. Again, very small, very fine tip brush, so I can get these tiny, tiny details. Coming down that. Coming down, coming down. Get, let's go ahead and hit the hilt while we're here. Give that just a second to dry. It doesn't take long with these Reaper miniature paints. Put a little null oil gloss around the silver nodules. There we go. We'll come back and we can clean that white up in a little bit. Let's pull off the excess there. Now we let that dry, and we can flip it over and do the other side. Strengthen that little dividing line. You can see what a nice difference that dividing line makes. All right, well, we've had that front chance has had a chance to dry, so now we're going to come to do the back. To do the back, I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to paint the whole thing with contrast medium, not just do one side at a time. I think. No, for this blade, I'm going to do it the same both ways. Never mind. I, in, a, in an upcoming blade, I will paint the entire blade all at once. But uh, this blade, I'm going to do two ways. I don't take quite as long on the back side as I did on the front. Uh, at this point, I've, been, I've done five or six of these, so I'm getting faster at it. Want to make sure that we end at roughly the same point, so we pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Make sure we get on both sides of the nodule there, the that that line there that the power power line thing is. And now we're ready to come back in and do the other side. There we go. And I use Leviadon and Ethermatic. You don't have to go as dark as Leviadon. If you wanted to use Ultramarines or Talisar, you could be fine with that. You would also don't have to go as pale as Ethermatic. You could go to a Talisar blue from Leviadon or from Ultramarines. This gives me a greater contrast because the colors are so far apart. One of them, Ethermatic is so light and Leviadon is so dark. You could also just blend Leviadon out to itself, out to the far end of where Leviadon ends uh, and is, is now thinned enough that you can't uh, see. So this is, I'm coming in with my blade steel again. I've let that front, that surface dry. And we're just hitting the node and the tube to give it that power effect. And now we're coming in with our white. A little bit of water on our brush there, thin that out just a hair. That's maybe a little too thin, but we're gonna work with it. Let's 
something to steady my hand. There we go. We're up and down that line of the blade. We just want the, the blade point touching the brush just barely. There we go. Nice and smooth, nice and even. Right up that side, right up the side here. Nice and smooth, nice and even. There we go. And up the back. There we go. So that's our first way to do power swords. For our second way to do power swords, I've already done the silver and the gnome. Now I'm going to do this one in green, and this is a single color green. I've seen examples of this online. This is my least favorite way of painting power swords. Uh, so I'm sticking it here in the middle of the video. Uh, and I'm painting the entire thing in, in uh, contrast medium, and then I'm putting warp lightning starting at the very bottom. Warp lightning is a very yellow green as it, as it pales out. And I'm just gradually going to move it generally more towards the tip, ending about two-thirds of the way up. And it's just going to get paler and paler and paler as I go. And I have to add a little bit more because it's difficult to get it exactly the right consistency and exactly the right color and texture. So just sort of move, wiggle, 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 wiggle move it around to get it about two-thirds of the way up so that we have a sword that starts dark green and ends uh, pale green. And you want about the bottom third to be pretty dark and that middle third to be where as it lightens and lightens and lightens. And you want it to come up to roughly the same spot on both sides. So I'm not in love with this particular technique, the sword being the same color on both sides. I think GW has presented their power swords to us over the years in a very specific way, and it's not this way. But I do see this way online, and so I did want to show how you could do it this way if this is the way you like doing your power swords. Now I need to set that down and let it dry. And we're ready to move on. This one is an elven sword for Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, and I'm going to do it the same way, but I'm going to use Shyish and Magos Purples. I'm going to do... Shyish is my darker purple at the bottom, and Magos Purple is... is this is fundamentally the same as the Leviathan and Ethermatic, except I'm using Shyish and, and uh, Magos. And um, the green one is the only single color green, single color I do of these power swords four ways. So the Shyish and the Magos, this is a thinner sword also, so it blends a little easier as well. Come back and do the other side. Shyish at the peak. Dry my brush. Come in for the Magos in the center. Wipe off the excess. It's all about being able to control where the paint is and where the paint goes. This technique. And you're gonna have to let this side dry a little bit so it doesn't flow weird. And then once this side has dried, you can move on to the back side. I've gone ahead and painted both both halves of the backside simultaneously. And you want to make sure the two darks and the two lights are the same. We've been saving a little bit of time here by doing the Magos purple and the Shyish purple at the same time instead of doing one half and then the other half. And now I'm just wiping it down where it went where I don't want it. Because I have that contrast medium down, it hasn't stained the surface underneath where it went yet. So I can still maneuver it, manipulate it a little bit, keep it from going where I don't want it to go. Uh, set that sword down to dry. Now we're going to do the end in yellow and Flesh Terrors red. Flesh Terrors is a much darker red 
than Blood Angels Red, which is why I chose it for this. It's going to get me, I think, a better transition of uh, colors from a darker color to a lighter color. And this is the sort of a, uh, a blood letter, and I think it might even be from one of the like greater blood letter kind of things. Um, but this is from a corn demon. And the difference here I'm going with is I'm doing two. There's no white, and we're going yellow, red, yellow on one side, and red, yellow, red on the other. And blending that together so that they are opposing each other. And it creates a nice, fiery, flame sword look without me having to paint fire all, the, all over the place. And these two colors transition between themselves very nicely as well. Now we're going to have to give that side a chance to dry before we can flip it over. And now that they're all done... We've given them all a chance to dry. We're going to take our white. We're going to thin it with just a little tiny bit of water here. And we're going to come in and we're going to do all the lines. Do the center line up the purple sword very gently. Do the edges. I suppose you might be able to get away with doing the edges in a silver. I, I haven't ever tried that. But this is, this is Power Swords with contrast paint. I think that looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Let me know if you intend to try this method on your Power Swords. Uh, or if you're just going to stick to... I've always just done my Power Swords in silver prior to this. I always thought uh, Power Sword blending was too much effort. <laughs> so let me know if you guys intend to try this. Let me know what you guys think. Other colors you might be using in yours. If you did like this and want to see more of these kinds of videos where I'm not painting a particular color scheme or a particular army, let me know. Leave a thumbs up if you do like this video and want to see more of it. That's how I can tell. Uh, otherwise, I want to thank you so much for letting Seven Ninja Studios show you how to paint a power sword four different ways. Uh, if you did like it, uh, if, if you did enjoy this content and you want to help out the channel a little bit, just a dollar a month on my Patreon uh, as a tip helps keep me in brushes, minis, and paints. Um, anything over that tends to get you additional rewards at, at uh, 10, 25, and up. You, you actually get to uh, have me paint models on the channel, and then I give you those models. And that's not anything I'm doing here, but that is something I can do. Um, so if you do like it, thank you so much for your time. Let <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm rambling a little bit. Thank you for letting 7 Ninja Studios take your power swords from gray to great.